and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. Now, my wife and I have both recently purchased electric vehicles. Mine is the Chevy Volt with a V. Hers is the Chevy Bolt with a B. And as always, when the subject of electric vehicles come up, uh, we need to talk about charging. So being a plug-in hybrid with a rather small battery, mine charges just fine overnight off of a regular 120 volt household outlet. Hers will do that, but she has a much larger battery being electric only. So it would take about two days to go from empty to full. Uh, that being said, we are going to need to install a level two charger so that that can be accomplished overnight instead and i'm going to show you how to do that over here on the back wall of my garage i have already installed a 60 amp sub panel so i'm going to be running a wire from this panel uh, right through the wall down here and into the garage i'm then going to go from the back of the panel right about here uh, through this corner up this stud bay across the top of the door Probably back down because that's what I have access to right now over and across the bottom right here behind my workbench and finally up this wall I'm going to install my charger right where that shelf is uh, So that way I have access to charge the car in the garage But also run the cable under the door if I happen to be parked outside Before performing any electrical work make sure the breaker is turned off then I could remove the panel cover. The rest of the steps are the same whether you have a sub panel or are using your main house panel. With the breaker off, everything in here is dead and you can touch it without issue. To run the wire through the wall, I used this 1 inch LB fitting along with a 3 inch rigid nipple out the top. and a close nipple out the back. First, I remove the knockout from the bottom of the panel. Some knockouts fit multiple size conduits, so you may need to remove additional pieces to make things fit. If I insert my conduit now, it slides all the way through. To stop that from happening, I thread it on a lock nut and tightened it as far as it would go. Now the conduit pokes through a little and stops. After lining everything up, I marked the spot I needed to drill through the wall. I made a small pilot hole in the center with a quarter inch bit and used a carbide hole saw with a rotary hammer drill to drill the rest of the way. After test fitting my conduit, I marked a hole for a pipe hanger, drilled it out, installed a wall anchor, and screwed down the hanger. I then applied sealant to the top of my fitting and installed it through the hole. A second lock nut will hold it in place, and an anti-short bushing will stop the wires from chafing. I then installed the bolt and tightened the clamp to make sure nothing can move. And applied sealant to the rest of the hole. On the other side of the wall, I attached the close nipple and a female coupling.
A one inch cable clamp will provide strain relief. It's gonna be upside down because that's how things lined up. After removing the cover from this fitting, I'm ready to run my wire. This is 6.2 with ground, non-metallic sheathed cable, otherwise known as Romex. Good for up to 50 amps, which matches the plug on my charger. It's rather stiff and difficult to work with, but with a little help from my wife pushing from inside the garage, I was able to get it up into the panel. Once I made sure I had enough length, I stripped off the outer jacket with a razor blade, before cutting the individual wires to length and stripping the ends. And attaching the bare wire to the panel's ground bar. Even though the power is off, it's always a good idea to attach the ground first, just in case. Simply insert the wire into the clamp and tighten the screw. Especially for high amperage connections like this, make sure they are good and tight. The breaker then just clips onto the bus bar at the back of the panel. With everything hooked up in the panel, there was no need for this cable to move anymore, so I tightened the clamp. I then began the process of running the wire through the walls. I started by bending a hook in the end and feeding all 100 plus feet through a small hole in the corner studs. With that accomplished, I used insulated staples to attach the wire to the studs. At this point, my work inside the panel was done so I could close everything back up and reinstall the cover. With the breaker for the new circuit off, I could restore power to the garage. I then drilled a hole in the top plate of the wall, pulled the wire through, and secured it with staples. In a change from my original plan, I ran the wire all the way across the top of the studs, back down on the other side, around the corner, and into the stud bay where I plan to install my outlet. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, lovely handiwork of whoever owned this house a long time ago and decided they wanted power to the garage. Let this be an example of, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. I used a 4x4 electrical box to mount the outlet. First, I removed the knockout, installed a cable clamp, offset the box by the thickness of my wall covering, and screwed it into place.
So this is our NEMA 650 receptacle. It is a three wire, 220 volt. These two are the hots. This is the ground. Some people will install a 1450 receptacle, which also has a neutral. Uh, I'm not sure why the neutral is necessary for a 220 volt charger and mine doesn't use one. So I'm just going to install the three wire outlet. Uh, it'll save some money on wire. To install the outlet, I first stripped the cable. Bent the ground wire into a loop and screwed it into the hole in the back of the box. You might notice I screwed up the threads, so I put a nut on the back to hold it in place. I then attached a second wire using the other hole and connected it to the ground prong on my outlet. I could then attach the other two wires. Since both are hot and there is no neutral, it doesn't matter which one goes where. With everything connected, I mounted the outlet using the four included screws. With the power turned on, you should see approximately 240 volts between both hots, 120 volts between each hot and ground, and 120 between each hot and the metal box if you used one. After insulating the wall, I carefully measured the location of my box. Cut a piece of OSB to size on my table saw. Transfer the location of the outlet to the wood. And cut it out with a roto zip. I then lifted the wall into place and secured it with screws. With the cover plate installed, the outlet was ready to use. To install the charger itself, I first loosened the torque screw on the bottom and slid it off the mounting plate. I used one screw to hold the plate to the wall. While I made sure it was level, and installed the rest of the screws before hanging the charger on the wall and reinstalling the torque screw. After installing the cord holder, there was only one thing left to do. So that is how you install a level two electric vehicle charger. Uh, depending on the model and requirements of your particular charger, the wire size or outlet may be slightly different, but the basic process is still gonna be the same. Uh, that's the same way you would also install a 240 volt outlet for a welder, air compressor, or anything like that. If you found this video helpful, uh, don't forget to like and leave a comment below, and please subscribe to this channel for more content. Thanks for watching!